Hey everyone, welcome to Dubstock Live, brought to you by Man City Sleep World. The six game win streak is over, the five game road win streak is over, but this was a two point loss on the second night of a back to back, so maybe we can take a breath. We're going to break it down for you. Zena Keda, Kareth Burke, and this game started out a little weird to begin with because no Luca tonight, no Andrew Wiggins, no Jonathan Kaminga missing his sixth straight game. Warriors got into a 16 point hole early in that first quarter, but they made it up and they made it a game. They did, and tonight was a night where they were missing stars on both sides, but the Warriors were able to dig deep to keep up with a very talented Mavericks roster. I was impressed by the, the way that the Warriors played. I felt that they played gritty. I felt that they dug deep to try and figure out where can we get points where we're missing them. We don't have our attackers in Jonathan Kaminga and Andrew Wiggins, so we're probably going to have to rely on the three ball, and they didn't at first. In the first half, they won the points in the paint battle, 26-22. And then in the second half, things got a little weird. I think that's where things got a little bit strange um, in terms of where they were creating points because Steph Curry only had three points in the third quarter. Okay. They had to find some sources outside, but they were able to find their way out of that 16-point deficit and out of a nine-point deficit in the second half. And I thought it was a pretty impressive um, battle against the Mavericks. Okay, there you go. And then, Steph, you mentioned his third quarter. Well, how about his fourth quarter? Because 14 of his 28 points came in that fourth quarter. He checked into the game early. This is one where the Warriors said, okay, we are obviously playing for the win here. He checked in when they were down by eight. Which one was that? That was the three-pointer to make it a one-point game. Here's Steph trying it on the defensive end. Okay, that's what you like to see. Locked it. It was reviewed. Called a block. Here's his J to tie it up at 106 all. You know on the final possession it's going into Steph's hands. This is after his J shaking off the defender there. He was hounded all night by the defense, arriving at, what was he, 9 of 23. Do we have the final possession, the final possession there? He was smothered, double teamed by Kyrie and Jones Jr. Jones Jr. in this game was playing him all 94 oh, feet. No. Okay, he had a shadow, a barnacle on him, whatever you wanted to call him. <laughs> so Steph was the leading scorer in the game. He also looked a little bit frustrated. So what do you think about Steph's night? He had a pretty solid first half. Five points in the first quarter, six points in the second quarter, only one turnover per half as well. That third quarter was Weird. <laughs> this is not very typical Steph Curry. He wasn't able to find his rhythm going off of screens, being able to get open because of Jones Jr.'s just complete smothering of him. But in that fourth quarter, he became intentful and engaged to make sure that he could get off screens. The way he worked to get Jones tangled up in switches, tangled up and trying to figure out where to go. You could see his off ball work ratchet up. And I thought it was a really valiant effort of him, not only to get that steely two in that corner to tie it up, but then also trying to get that charge as well. Couldn't do it quite as well as his teammate Pajemski. Uh, but very, very great effort, I think, for, for Steph Curry to try to battle this out for this team. Yeah, there are times when you don't mind, you know, Steph checking in a little early going, yeah. it's Steph Curry time! It's Steph okay, Curry time, especially, yeah. Yeah, I like that he tried to take a charge in this game. I like that he was dialed in on the defensive end. Steph finishing 28-6-5. and five. But let's talk a little bit about that first quarter because there was this uh-oh moment when the Mavericks started so hot and built that 16-point lead. I was like, what are we... What, what is this quarter? What are we watching here? <laughs> but we're going to give the BMW Ultimate Performer to the entire bench tonight. Ooh, yes. I noticed something weird when I was looking at the first quarter. The bench was perfect. I, no that was my player first note, Karen. missed a shot. Yes. Okay, what did you think about their ability to be locked in to bail out the starters? 100% in the first quarter. They also outscored the starters. 16 to 15 in the first quarter. They outscored the opponent bench overall throughout the game, but it was just relentless pursuit of the ball and then also great decision making in the half court set. Whether they were running in transition or being able to see each other across the court, you love their full use of the space. This is what you saw from one side of the court to the other, paint touches, then of course utilizing Chris Paul, TJD's height above the rim, and boom, you thought Pete, Pods was going to pass that up to GP2. No, he was putting the ball in himself. And Pods, you really can thank him for a lot of the energy and the spurt that was given there. Pods had a little bit of a quiet February, uh, particularly mm -hmm. after he had his knee injury. You saw him kind of wane a little bit in his ability to score the ball. However, tonight was his 36th game. 
being able to score in double figures. He is capable of finding the basket. And you know why? Because his intent every single time he gets the ball and pushes in transition is to get into the paint. Whether he's throwing it up for a lob, whether he's kicking it out on the wing, whatever he wants to do, it starts with getting into the paint. And then sometimes people let him finish. Yeah. And he was able to not only get in the paint tonight, he was also able to get some post moves. You saw him do a little bit of turnaround Jays, a little bit of his hook shot that <laughs> earlier this season wasn't looking so pretty. It's looking a lot better these days for him. And so this is where the bench was able to really capitalize on Pods' ability to create um, for himself and for his teammates, run in transition with GP2, running up, Moses Moody as well, and then Chris Paul. Man, his box score does not reflect what I think he did for this game uh, coming off the bench. Okay, I want to let you talk about CP3. Um, I was just going to hey, just let you keep going, but le a quick note on Pods. He's had some changes lately, right? Like he was in the starting lineup for a while, building the chemistry there. Then he came out when Clay came in. Um, there are times in the games where you could see Draymond Green is upset with him or CP3 sure. is upset with him. So veterans on the team trying to tell him, don't make that move. Don't quite overhelp or don't do that. Sure. He has to be a sponge and take that in. If I were a rookie and Draymond Green were yelling at me, I would have to play the game in diapers, okay? Like, I just, I couldn't <laughs> weather that. But there was also the time in the second quarter, I believe, um, Pods picked up his third foul of the game, mm -hmm. okay? It was from, it was on Kyrie. It was, like, so far away from the basket. He didn't need to do that. Right. So that's when Steve Kerr took him aside, put his arm around him, had a little chat with him. So that third foul in the second quarter, and then you see Pods finishing with only four fouls. So the ability to stay locked in on defense but not make those silly mistakes to kind of absorb the advice coming your way. Very good. Okay, CP3. You wanted to talk about CP3. Was it uh, that he started the second half? You said he's doing the things that aren't showing up on the box score. You look at the two most productive lineups tonight with CP3 was in both of them, plus 12 and plus minus. Uh, excuse me, plus 12 and plus nine in those two plus minuses of those lineups. Chris Paul is a person that is able to see the floor and create for himself, just like he did just in this play. He can make sure that whoever's on the floor gets involved, gets in, engaged in the game. And he had a season high of four steals tonight. He had him hands everywhere uh, throughout this game tonight. And so you really love that Chris Paul is the floor leader that you want. We've been seeing him do this all season. My favorite part about tonight's game is how many times I saw Chris Paul pulling folks away from the huddles, talking to them, mm -hmm. having some one-on-one -on -one chats. He did this with Moses Moody earlier in the game that I noticed. And then as soon as he finished with Moses Moody, he goes into the huddle and talks to Draymond. That is a level of respect for a voice, to be able to talk to a three-year veteran and be able to talk to a 10-year, 11-year, 12-year veteran in, in Draymond and Clay and Steph and have an impact on the game that tells you, hey, this is what I'm seeing. And they respect his vision. They know what it is. At the end of the game, same thing. Stop fouling. Stop turning the ball over. He yeah. was telling them these messages. So that's his impact, where he can just say a message, enact a vision for the team, and also control the pace for this Warriors team. I was listening to a radio interview with Ron Adams, the assistant coach. I think it was one of Bonte's shows. And Ron Adams was saying he's never met anyone who wants to talk basketball like Chris Paul. You can pull him aside in the hallway. He will talk your ear off about the X's and O's. He's yeah. such a good study. When you have 19 seasons in the league, and you have rookies to teach, when you have younger people to teach. Maybe you can even talk to Draymond. Like, his rapport with Draymond is interesting. Oh, yeah. They've sort of, you know, complimented each other after, let's face it, like, antagonizing each other or simply not liking each right, other when they weren't right. teammates. But these are guys who will sit and talk hoop. What a wealth of knowledge to have in your locker room. I wasn't sure about CP3 joining this team. I wasn't sure if he would be willing to come off the bench. I just wasn't sure if this would be a frictionless thing. He's fitting right in, and he's yeah. been very important to the Warriors' wins or to those learning moments in a season, um, and that's what you want for this team. It's a respect thing. You respect competitors. You respect people that want to understand the game, that want to play the game the way it's supposed to be played, and that's what the common ground, particularly between Draymond Green and Chris Paul, has been this season, is that you can, they respect how much they are passionate for this game. It's actually the other thing that I think allows pods to continue to stay on the floor and to continue to get playing time in the midst of him making mistakes throughout this season is because this team, from Steve Kerr to his teammates, respects the way that Pods is a competitor and wants to get it right. Yep. The other night, Pods had made uh, 
a mistake on the floor that caused Draymond to go into a frenzy. He was in a fury, yeah. just, I mean, from the timeout all the way through, talking to Celebrini, talking to Anthony Vereen, talking to everyone that would listen. He was mad at Pods. A few games later, I mean, a few plays later, Pods and Draymond are in the game, and they're trying to get a play set up for Steph. Pods is literally called for an offensive foul for how hard he's trying to set the screen for Steph. That is someone that's like, listen, I, I heard you. Mm -hmm. I'm going to try to make this right to the point that I'll pick up yeah. a foul, right? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. This is a guy that's trying to get it right. And so Brandon Pajemski, I think, also has that same level of competitive energy that people respect. And so between Chris Paul, between Draymond Green, between Brandon Pajemski, throughout this entire roster, there's a lot of respect flowing mm -hmm. for those that want to play the game well. It seems like the Warriors finally, because uh, there were seasons where they didn't have that right mix of veteran, yeah. veteran presence and young enthusiasm and it is coming together in a way that doesn't feel like there are two timelines operating right now it's just one collective Very true. all right when we come back on dubstock live brought to you by mancini sleep world we're going to go back to the conversation about steph curry he's played a lot of games this season in fact maybe the most in several seasons let's discuss what is motivating steph curry at this point in his career when the warriors are looking at the 10 seed Dubs Talk Live is presented by Mancini Sleep World. Visit Mancini Sleep World during our We'll Pay the Sales Tax event. Save big on premium mattresses plus free delivery. Hurry in now or visit us online at sleepworld.com. Thank, thank you for tuning in here. We got Brie Bank saying, my baby Zena. We got some fans in here. That's right. That's Hi, right. Um, Andes is saying, yeah, it's okay to yell at teammates because it's emotional and competitive. Um, but at the same time, you need to put your arm around them. CP3 did that later with Pods after he yelled at him. Good stuff. Yes, yeah. you don't yell for the sake of yelling. Hopefully. Hopefully right. you can rein in your emotions enough. I actually, the moment that you referenced with Draymond, it seems like Rick Celebrini has become like the Draymond whisperer. They spent yeah. so much time together. So Draymond, and I thought that was, Draymond needed to blow off some steam. He didn't get in Pods' face, but you could tell he was mad. So he avoided Pods a little bit. He walked Got out away. everything he needed to yeah. say. Yeah. And my, Pods was sitting there on the bench. He was, like, kind of trying to make eye contact with Draymond. And it was just you, I mean, he could tell it was about him. But both those guys just needed to cool off a little sure. bit, I yeah. think. Yeah. I mean, Draymond was, yeah. like, literally where the dance team was. <laughs> walking around. Yeah. yeah, yeah. And then having to come back. And then Nancy Vereen had to calm him down. But then yeah. the ultimate person was Chris Paul yeah. that came over, put a hand around yeah. him, let him talk. Um... And so, you know, okay. it makes sense. Yes. And then a few plays later, I think Paul's made a bucket or like had a rebound or stop or something. And there's Draymond, you know, giving him a butt tap. So it's okay. It's, it's, it's a it's respect factor. Next, like it's yeah. going to be like that. And you want it to be like that. It was Chris yeah. Paul that said a few uh, games ago in his post game presser, if I'm not yelling at you, there's a problem. <laughs> right? <laughs> if and I'm I not feel talking to you, if I'm not talking to you, there's, there's a, problem. a problem. And I feel like it's the same way with Draymond. I think so. Because too. just how much they care about, like, I love the way you put it, their studies of the game. Yeah. That's how much they care. Like, if they're not yelling at you, that means you're probably not involved. Yes. Veterans would always like to see enthusiasm, even yeah. if it's misplaced or undisciplined, than the opposite, where you just don't, you don't bring the energy. So, right. Yeah. All right, let's get back in here. Welcome back to Mancini's Sleep World, bringing you Dubs Talk Live. <laughs> I flipped that upside down. <laughs> there you go, Mancini's Sleep World, brought to you by Dubs Talk Live. Somebody needs some sleep. Hey, <laughs> I'm going to get on one of those mattresses, and I'm going to go night-night. Um, Steph Curry, the leading scorer in there this game go. with 28. The fact that he is sustaining this, he's playing 35 minutes a game, checking in early, trying to be the guy who's going to put the team on his shoulders to see if they can get this win. We just need to put this in context, that this has been a very healthy season for Steph. In fact, we have the numbers as far as how many games he's played this season. This is coming from Sam Estan. This is coming from Sam. I got to squint on the last name. I can't quite see it because my contacts aren't in. Uh, <laughs> but this is game 71 for Steph. He has not played this much since he played 69 games in the 2018-2019 uh, season. And again, no rest games for Steph. There was a time when the Warriors were going to try to find one on the road, couldn't get it. They were trying to find a few rest minutes for Steph inside of games. That was a one-game thing. Yeah, that didn't really didn't last. <laughs> uh, so here's Steph Curry at age 36, giving it his all still as a competitor is want to do. 
I wonder sometimes what is motivating him. Duh, the obvious answer is a championship. But as the 10 seed, it's going to be very hard. But do you have to keep that belief, almost an irrational belief, that this could be a championship season to set that, that tone or, or to be that model for your teammates? Absolutely. And to go back to your earlier question of what is motivating him, time. Mm -hmm. Time. Steph Curry has a little bit of time left, not only within his ability of his body to be able to dedicate to this game, but ability to play with his bros, yeah. right? Draymond Green and Klay Thompson, the, the, the window is closing in which those three can pr particularly be viable together um, and be efficient together. And then also time to be able to have with the younger players that are coming up and, and still be relevant. So I think that he absolutely has to have an irrational thought because anything less yeah. will produce something that is not of, ca of caliber to be able to win. He has to be believed that he's this good and that this team is this good in order to output something that showcases that ability to go to the playoffs and to make a run. Whenever the Warriors have had this underdog belief of themselves, of we're capable of it, we're capable of it. Since they started this back in 2015, they've been successful. Funny thing is, mm -hmm. Now they've got, you know, the accolades. Yeah. They're wearing that cape of like, oh, we've been there before, et cetera. But they're underdogs again. And they have to go back and channel that same energy of no one believes us in, it, that we can do this. But it's the, you know, it's like 07, 08, we believe Warriors coming out again. And Steph Curry and Steve Kerr have been saying this for several games in their postgame press. Order. We believe we can do this. Yeah. We can go on regardless around. of this home record, regardless of how we've been, you know, playing in these clutch games and losing these clutch games, we can do this. And they have to have that belief in themselves. I think you would never see Steph say or even give any sort of hint or indication like, eh, we don't have it this year. Because actually, because he's such a competitor mm. that if he ever had that feeling, I wonder if it would break him. And at that point, he's like, I'm done. I got to retire. He, he, he can never lose that. Yeah, right? I know. So here they are sitting in the 10 spot. It's so unfortunate that they lost this game because the Pelicans also lost tonight. The Kings lost tonight. The Warriors could have crept up at least as far as how many games behind, uh, how many games back they were, but they didn't make the most of that opportunity. A two point loss in a back to back. It's tough. Maybe the legs weren't there uh, and credit to the Mavericks too but yeah you think about what Steph wants to accomplish this season even going back to his quote about we can't worry about the standings we can't worry about the seeding is what he said mm. we just have to play our game and I see a team doing their best and trying to put together trying to put it together before they reach the play-in. Warriors kept Dallas tonight under their average, 118 points per game. They kept him under their average at the half as well. Mm -hmm. They kept Kyrie Irving to his average, which is not an easy thing to do when you know that Kyrie Irving's trying to make up for the absence of his brother, Luka Doncic. This is an impressive defensive game for the Warriors, something that they struggled with earlier in the season. And so even though this is a loss, it does generate belief in if we make it to the playoffs, mm -hmm. we can make a dent. Don't know how far we can go, but if we can do this on the road against Dallas, yes, even without Doncic, but P.J. Washington having yeah, yeah, 32 game. points, if we can do that against a capable Dallas team, we can make a dent in the playoffs. So mm -hmm. it makes sense that even though this is a loss and it hurts, it still fuels their belief in themselves. Yeah, I don't think this is going to be an angry plane ride home. No, it, it really it really shouldn't be. Um, you gave me a perfect segue as far as talking about defense because let's spotlight GP2 for just a moment. Not this, yes. this game, but his last three games as well. He was in the closing lineup tonight. He was the point of attack defender. He was on Kyrie at game's end. We're kind of watching the body of work for Gary Payton the second right now. What are you observing, Zena? I'm observing that he is efficient on the floor. He is always in the right spots when it comes to defense, uh, or excuse me, for the offense. He hits his open threes, which is huge. And he's also this right here. He creeps behind the defense and people forget about him. And there he goes in transition, being able to hit those buckets from that baseline, being able to backdoor cut, get an easy layup. The reason why he's been so efficient in these last few games, 14 points tonight, six to seven from the field, eight points and eight points in the last three, it's just because he does these easy things on offense. He doesn't have to do too much. His energy is really concerned for the defensive side of the ball. And tonight, he made work for Kyrie mm -hmm. difficult, okay? Mm -hmm. Kyrie's gonna go home, hang his keys on the door and be like, baby, <laughs> 
tonight was a day at the <laughs> office, okay? Because GP2 was on his back tonight, and he was doing exactly what he was supposed to do. You saw him close the game mm -hmm. as well, right? And so GP2 has just been efficient where he's supposed to be. He has been the ultimate role player for the Warriors, and he's also now becoming a little bit of a bucket mm -hmm. because I'm sure the scouts are going to start waking up a little bit and start including him in the, hey, watch the back line of the defense. There's this thing called a GP2 mm -hmm. that can jump above almost everyone mm -hmm. that's available for an easy bucket. Yeah, somebody who's willing to sprint and transition will yes. get you a bucket, especially when you're that talented. So last three games, 14 points, 8 points, 8 points. He can pour them on very quickly as well. Also noticing that GP2 is doing this just a little bit hobbled because he appeared on the injury report, did play in this game, right. uh, but slowed a little bit by a left ankle injury. So there you go, GP2. All right, finally, should we give some love to Pods? I think we kind of, we touched on him a lot in the A block. I was glad he only finished with four fouls, considering he had three in the second quarter. But Pod's one of those hustle guys as well, bringing it from start to finish in the game. Like, his, his attitude really helped in the first quarter when the Warriors were down. Pods made some really beautiful passes tonight and makes them, made some smart decisions. He has, his three-point shot has struggled, but his ability to find his teammates, I mean, that was supposed to be for Pods, I mean, for, for GP2, but it went in, the, uh, went in. But one thing that you can critique Pods' offensive game has been about him penetrating inside without a goal. Not intentfully, like not knowing where he wanted to go, what he wanted to do, did he want to finish, etc. We've seen it in the last few games where he's gone inside the paint and tried to go in looking for contact that never came and then blew the bunny. Instead of going in there intentfully and saying, I'm going to finish this or I'm going to kick it out. Tonight you saw him do that more distinctly. Dis distinctively. He went inside and if he got bumped, he put it up. Even if he didn't get the foul call, he knew what he was doing. Mm -hmm. And so he saw him make some really, really pretty plays for himself. And then also being able to clearly pass the ball in transition, being able to get into the paint and say, okay, I don't have an open bunny. Let me see if there, I've got an open lane coming, you know, being followed by another Warriors player. And that's what you saw Pods do, being able to find his teammates a lot easier. So really well played carefully played game from Pods tonight. There's more resistance in the NBA. Things happen quicker, right? So when yeah. he's going in for those drives, if he had an easier finish in college, well, the NBA is a different. Is and different. they hacked him. Yeah. They used to hack him in college, and mm -hmm. he used to get those calls. But they can just go up straight mm -hmm. and be a tree, and it's a lot difficult to, to you know, finish over those trees than – he probably was was used to in college. All right. When we come back, let's take a look at those standings one more time. Also need to look at the schedule. Five games left here. It is possible that the Warriors finish with a better record this season than they did last season, and they'll be the 10 seed. Wild times in the West. We'll take a look at it next when Dubstock Live, brought to you by Man City Sleep World, rolls on. YouTube. All right, Dub Giant saying absolutely it would be awesome to go 5-0. and 5-0 and to get the 7 seed. There are things within the realm of possibility, but of course the Lakers are going to want to have, you know, want to say something about that. They have two games against Utah still. And although Utah's season is like effectively finished, that doesn't mean Utah wants to roll over and just hand an easy double right. to the Warriors. Look so, at the Spurs. Yeah. They're not. That's what I mean. The, people are looking to disrupt seasons. You ruined ours. Yeah. Ours is done. Yeah. We're going to ruin yours. Yeah. There's something freeing about nothing left to play for other than pride. And you just you got to come correct. What's the saying? Things. You play with house money. There you go. There you are. Hello again from Manila. Thank you for tuning in. Kat saying hello from L.A. William is saying, can we finish higher than 10? Possibly, it's because it's not just like the Warriors. It would be great if they could win out or, or get f four and one on this. But you also have to make sure the other teams fall, and they're just as desperate as the Warriors. Correct. Fall is in lose, um, so everybody's playing for their lives right now. Yeah. Let's see what else is in here. Do 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 do. You say five minutes remaining. Oh, sir. Okay. <laughs> that's a, that's Let's a talk about JK a little bit, too, because six games that he missed. And I, I sort of predicted, not predicted, I won't give myself the credit, but I actually wondered in the last Dubstock Live, because it was a back-to-back, -back, even if he needed, I wondered if JK was going to play in this game. Oh, really? Yeah, yeah, I did. Just kind of knowing Steve Kerr and being like, okay, abundance of caution, mm -hmm. et cetera, et cetera. Mm -hmm. But yeah. anyway. 
Hmm. I was like, mm, I can see him actually not playing. And now they got two days till Sunday. Welcome back to Dubstock Live. Taking a look at the remaining schedule because we're seeing some comments in the YouTube. Can the Warriors win out? All right, we've got Utah, the Lakers, Portland, New Orleans, and then Utah again. So one more back-to-back -back remaining. 17 for the season. <sighs> the most in the league, although that did happen because teams were gracious enough to reschedule uh, after Decky died. So here's, here are the Warriors. Five games left. They're sitting in the 10 spot. They're two games behind the Lakers, two games behind Sacramento. Sacramento is a team that lost tonight. The Warriors lost tonight too. So it gets a little bit dicey. If the Warriors handle their business, it definitely is possible for them to move up. But you're talking about very desperate teams ahead of them as well. Exactly. What's your feeling? I do feel like the Warriors could win out. Mm -hmm. I absolutely do believe that. I think the only way they'll do that though, Wiggins and Kaminga need to be healthy. Okay. They might be able to steal some without a Kaminga, but if they're all healthy, I think it's capable, that they're, they're capable. Now, exactly as you mentioned, these teams are desperate to solidify not only their spot in the play-in, but maybe creep into a playoff seat. It probably isn't gonna happen, but they're gonna try and do anything to not even have a question of it. The thing you have to remember, the nine and 10 spots have to win two games straight in order to be able to make it to the, the playoffs. Seven and eight only have to win one. So if you can creep into the seven and eight spot even, I mean, there's still fight to be had here. So I don't yeah. see, I don't anticipate the teams above them losing more, um, losing more than the Warriors will lose. So yeah, I got you. No, yeah. the Warriors know that play in. I think in the very first play in season, why can't I remember three years ago, two or three years ago, they lost to the Lakers, then they yes. lost to the Grizzlies, and poof, your set your season is very suddenly over. So yeah. yeah, that's the urgency here. Jonathan Kaminga missed his sixth straight game with bilateral knee tendonitis. This was the second night of a back-to-back. -back. All indications were he would play against the Rockets. Okay, yeah. uh, he needed more time. Did a scrimmage, didn't quite feel it. Okay, he'll play against the Mavericks. Didn't play tonight. I would say alarm bells would go off in my mind if he doesn't play in the next game. I agree. Okay. I agree. So if you, some, yeah, something to if you don't have him, this has now been f over two weeks mm, yeah, about yeah. that he hasn't played, it might be a let's just shut him down for the season. Ooh. Could be. We don't know the extent of the injury. So, yeah, when the Warriors come back home, it's, a, it's an early game on Sunday. That is something to definitely keep an eye on. No alarms yet. No, 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 yet. no, no. Not for me no. yet. But it, it depends on how they do. Seven. If they get to the play-in and playoffs, yeah. he'll, give, he'll have time. Yeah. And if they don't, no need. All right. Thanks for watching, everybody. This is Dubstock. We'll continue the conversation on YouTube. I'm just saying that Kaminga injury is getting a little worrisome. Call Shaq and get some icy hot. <laughs> when you were talking about Kyrie, I was like, baby, get the Tiger Bomb. <laughs> 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 Work my shoulders. <laughs> there you go. There you go. Yes, yes, yes. All right. Hopefully this was just an abundance of caution thing for Jonathan yeah. Kaminga because it was a back-to-back. -back. Um, I mean, but maybe he needed just one more step of conditioning. Maybe he's going to do something on Saturday to get ready, ready for the early game on Sunday. If he doesn't. We just don't know. Yeah. If he doesn't play on Sunday and the Warriors lose on Sunday, and then the Warriors lose on Monday. If they lose two more straight, like two, if they don't, if they go three of two. Three and two in the yeah, last five. Yeah, in the last five, um, I don't see the point in risking mm. Jonathan Kaminga. Mm. Um, Even with the off season right there? Well, no, I'm saying like, if they, if they, like for example, if they come back and they lose on Sunday, and they lose again on Tuesday, I think it is. I would sit him until they if they until the play-in game. Oh, I see. Yeah. Okay. okay. It's would, kind of like, but they. You're right. They don't really. They will. They should be a play-in team. The Rockets can't right. really catch them. Okay, got it. That's like, what I'm saying. Like, there's no reason yeah, yeah. to risk him in these last few games mm. when you need him for the play-in. What about his conditioning, though? What about that game speed? Because the playoffs are a different level. You need everybody, like, building that runway. To That's get, true. Yeah. But I would say that that time that they're playing is when he can be in practice, mm -hmm. um, you know, building that conditioning and scrimmaging somebody. and things of that sort. Yeah. Um, 
But I just don't see, I, I, I wouldn't risk it. I wouldn't risk it. Um, he's young too. I hope his knees are okay. Yeah, I do too. I don't want anybody injured. Can we have a healthy Warrior squad heading into the postseason? Jeez Louise, 25th nice. new lineup tonight. Hey. 25th, which is so crazy. I did not know this. That's not even a high number in the NBA. No, I think the the heat are on. The like heat are like 30. forty or something. Yeah, they're, yeah, they're, yeah. They're up there. Yeah. I didn't even. I thought it was crazy number. And they're, apparently, it's not. Mm. All right. Anywho, that forty is like half the game. Because we're talking about half the game. They, I Sounds think like they were like forty 35. something. Yeah. That's okay. a lot. Hey, we're out of here. Thanks for watching. We will see you this weekend. Enjoy your weekends, guys. See you Sunday.